becomes what he thinks about. His life becomes one of frustration and fear and anxiety and worry. And if he thinks about nothing, he becomes nothing. Now, how does it work? Why do we become what we think about? Well, I'll tell you how it works as far as we know. Now, to do this, I want to tell you about a situation that parallels the human mind. Suppose a farmer has some land, and it's good for the land. Now, the land gives the farmer a choice. He may plant in that land whatever he chooses. The land doesn't care. It's up to the farmer to make the decision. Now, remember, we're comparing the human mind with the land because the mind, like the land, doesn't care what you plant in it. It will return what you plant, but it doesn't care what you plant. Now, let's say that the farmer has two seeds in his hand. One is a seed of corn. The other is nightshade, a deadly poison. He digs two little holes in the earth, and he plants both seeds, one corn, the other nightshade. He covers up the holes, waters, and takes care of the land, and what will happen? Invariably, the land will return what's planted, as it's written in the Bible, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Now, remember, the land doesn't care. It'll return poison in just as wonderful abundance as it will corn. So up come the two plants, one corn, one poison. Now, the human mind is far more fertile, far more incredible and mysterious than the land, but it works the same way. It doesn't care what we plant. Success? Failure. A concrete, worthwhile goal? Or confusion? Misunderstanding? Fear? Anxiety? And so on. But what we plant, it must return to us. You see, the human mind is the last great unexplored continent on Earth. It contains riches beyond our wildest dreams. It will return anything. We want a plant. Now, you might say, well, if that's true, why don't people use their minds more? Well, I think they figured out an answer to that one, too. Our mind comes with standard equipment at birth. It's free, and things that are given to us for nothing, we place little value on. Things that we pay money for, we value. The paradox is that exactly the reverse is true. Everything that's really worthwhile in life came to us free. Our minds, our souls, our bodies, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our intelligence, our love of family and children and friends and country, all these priceless possessions are free. But the things that cost us money are actually very cheap and can be replaced at any time. A good man can be completely wiped out and make another fortune. He can do that several times. Even if our home burns down, we can rebuild it. But the things we got for nothing, we can never replace. The human mind isn't used because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. It can do any kind of job we assign to it, but generally speaking, we use it for little jobs instead of big important ones. Universities have proved that most of us are operating at about 10% or less of our abilities. So decide now. What is it you want? Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. What is it you want? Do you want to be an outstanding salesman? A better worker at your particular job? Do you want to go places in your company? In your community? Do you want to get rich? All you've got to do is plant that seed in your mind, care for it, work steadily toward your goal, and it will become a reality. It not only will, there's no way that it cannot. You see, that's a law, like the laws of Sir Isaac Newton, the laws of gravity. If you get on top of a building and jump off, you'll always go down. You'll never go up, and it's the same with all the other laws of nature. They always work. They're inflexible. Think about your goal in a relaxed, positive way. Picture yourself in your mind's eyes having already achieved this goal. See yourself doing the things you will be doing when you've reached your goal. Ours has been called the phenobarbital age, the age of ulcers and nervous breakdowns and tranquilizers, at a time when medical research has raised us to a new plateau of good health and longevity. Far too many of us worry ourselves into an early grave, trying to cope with things in our own little personal ways without learning a few great laws that will take care of everything for us. These things we bring on ourselves through our habitual way of thinking. Every one of us is the sum total of his own thoughts. He is where he is because that's exactly where he really wants to be, whether he'll admit that or not. Each of us must live off the fruit of his thoughts in the future because what you think today and tomorrow, next month and next year will mold your life and determine your future. You're guided by your mind. I remember one time I was driving through eastern Arizona and I saw one of those giant earth-moving machines roaring along the road at about 35 miles an hour with what looked like 30 tons of dirt in it. A tremendous, incredible machine. And there was a little man perched way up on top with the wheel in his hands guiding it. 
And as I drove along, I was struck by the similarity of that machine to the human mind. Just suppose you're sitting at the controls of such a vast source of energy. Are you going to sit back and fold your arms and let it run itself into a ditch? Or are you going to keep both hands firmly on the wheel and control and direct this power to a specific, worthwhile purpose? It's up to you. You're in the driver's seat. You see, the very law that gives us success is a two-edged sword. We must control our thinking. The same rule that can lead a man to a life of success, wealth, happiness, and all the things he ever dreamed of for himself and his family. That very same law can lead him into the gutter. It's all in how he uses it, for good or for bad. This is the strangest secret in the world. Now, why do I say it's strange, and why do I call it a secret? Actually, it isn't a secret at all. It was first promulgated by some of the earliest wise men, and it appears again and again throughout the Bible, but very few people have learned it, understand it. That's why it's strange, and why for some equally strange reason it virtually remains a secret. I believe that you could go out and walk down the main street of your town and ask one man after another what the secret of success is, and you probably wouldn't run into one man in a month who could tell you. Now, this information is enormously valuable to us if we really understand it and apply it. It's valuable to us not only for our own lives, but the lives of those around us, our families, employees, associates, and friends. Life should be an exciting adventure. It should never be a bore. A man should live fully, be alive. He should be glad to get out of bed in the morning. He should be doing a job he likes to do because he does it well. One time I heard Grove Patterson, the great late editor-in-chief of the Toledo Daily Blade, make a speech. And as he concluded his speech, he said something I've never forgotten. He said... My years in the newspaper business have convinced me of several things. Among them, that people are basically good, and that we came from someplace, and we're going someplace. So we should make our time here an exciting adventure. The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. And the greatest teacher of all, the carpenter from the plains of Galilee, gave us the secret time and time again. As ye believe... So shall it be done unto you. I've explained the strangest secret in the world and how it works. Now on this side I want to explain how you can prove to yourself the enormous returns possible in your own life by putting this secret to a practical test. I want you to make a test that will last 30 days. It isn't going to be easy, but if you'll give it a good try, it will completely change your life for the better. Back in the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton, the English mathematician and natural philosopher, gave us the natural laws of physics, which apply as much to human beings as they do to the movement of bodies in the universe. And one of these laws is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Simply stated, as it applies to you and me, it means we can achieve nothing without paying the price. The results of your 30-day experiment will be in direct proportion to the effort you put forth. To be a doctor, you must pay the price of long years of difficult study. To be successful in selling, and remember that each of us succeeds to the extent of his ability to sell. Selling our families on our ideas, selling education in schools, selling our children on the advantages of living the good and honest life. Selling our associates and employees on the importance of being exceptional people. To, of course, the profession of selling itself. But to be successful in selling our way to the good life, we must be willing to pay the price. And what is that price? Well, it's many things. First, it's understanding emotionally, as well as intellectually, that we will literally become what we think about, that we must control our thoughts in order to control our lives. It's understanding fully that as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Second, it's cutting away all fetters from the mind and permitting it to soar as it was divinely designed to do. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. It's rising above narrow-minded pettiness and prejudice. And third, it's using all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem, to set a definite and clearly defined goal for yourself, to let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles, to let your imagination speculate freely upon many different possible solutions, to refuse to believe that there are any circumstances sufficiently strong to defeat you in the accomplishment of your purpose, to act promptly and decisively when your course is clear, and to keep constantly aware of the fact that you are, at this moment, standing in the middle of your own acres of diamonds, as Russell Conwell used to point out. And fourth, save at least 10% of every dollar you earn. It's also remembering that no matter what your present job, it has enormous possibilities if 
you're willing to pay the price. Now let's just go over the important points in the price each of us must pay to achieve the wonderful life that can be ours. It is, of course, worth any price. One, you will become what you think about. Two, remember the word imagination and let your mind begin to soar. Three, courage. Concentrate on your goal every day. Four, save 10% of what you earn. And five, action. Ideas are worthless unless we act on them. Now I'll try to outline the 30-day test I want you to make. Keep in mind that you have nothing to lose by making this test and everything you could possibly want to gain. There are two things that may be said of everyone. Each of us wants something, and each of us is afraid of something. I want you to wipe on a card.